What is up guys, it's Tony here, and today we are doing another montage editing tutorial. This is a suggested tutorial idea, um, and this one is about render settings. A lot of people um, have difficulties with finding out how to set up their render settings when exporting, how to export their clips, period, from Final Cut. And another common problem is that once you export your clip, it is too large and hard to upload to YouTube. So, I've been through all this, I've had all these issues, and I've found uh, a solution that works for me, and I'm going to be showing you guys it today. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open up uh, a new project. And when you do that, um, you can use custom settings. And uh, you can actually have it be based on the first video clip putting in, put into the timeline. I usually do that, and I usually put in uh, some sort of footage at 720p, uh, 60 frames a second. But for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to do custom settings. Uh, I would recommend doing 1080p across the board and changing the rate to 60p, which is 60 frames per second. Um, and for the audio, you can do, you know, standard, it doesn't really matter, it's not going to make that much of a difference. But if you do do custom, do stereo, I would recommend going to at least 96 uh, kilohertz. And I would also recommend to go with ProRes uh, 422 high quality, that works pretty good. Uh, uncompressed is also uh, just as good. Um, but I just do default settings, and I usually do set based on first clip. Um, but for this demo, I'm just going to keep that at custom. And uh, what I would recommend doing is, you know, name the product, project, whatever you want it to be. And I would recommend that, you know, if you're going to name it um, something different on YouTube, uh, that's fine. I would recommend just putting whatever works for you to keep in mind what project it is. For example, say I'm doing something for Encore, my friend. Uh, I'll just name it Encore. So I remember that this is Encore's episode. Um, and that usually helps me keep track. And I just do it in all caps. Now, um, so we can go ahead and this isn't going to be Encore's clip. We can just put any old clip in here. And, you know, you can just edit it however you want, as usual. Just, you know, go through and edit it. I'm just going to have one clip in here that's uh, about 17 seconds long. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to export it. So, when you're exporting, you go to Share. You go to Export Media. You can also hit Command-D. E. And once this pops up, eventually, spinning wheel of death here. It's taking a bit. Uh, but yeah, once this, uh, once this pops up, you're going to go ahead and export video and audio. This is very important. I don't know how many times I, I used to export video only and go, what the hell's going on? Where's my audio? Video and audio. I think it's quite obvious. And you can change your settings. Uh, I don't know why it says, I guess current settings means whatever settings the project is. Um, I would recommend just doing current settings if you have that as an option. If not, I would recommend doing H.264. Um, that's, you know, very high quality uh, compatible codec. And uh, I would, you know, you don't have to open it with anything. You know, this is when it finishes uh, exporting. Uh, you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, I usually do quick time so I know that it's uh, finished. And you'll see here it went with the settings that I already have in the project, which is 1920, 1080, and 60 frames a second in H.264. And the estimated size is 84 megabytes. Um, so, you know, you can change this around current settings. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, estimated size is unknown. And when you do current settings, it's pretty much no codec. It just goes by raw settings, uh, and you'll get the best quality possible. So if you have the option for current settings, I'd recommend doing that. And it'll give you the best quality overall. And then when you export it, uh, you can save it wherever you want. I'm going to save it just to desktop. And we'll export that out. It goes rather quick, but um, I'm going to go ahead and cut here until it finishes. Once it finishes, you're going to notice it is sitting on your desktop, and you're going to notice that this file is 500 megabytes, a half a gigabyte. That is a lot of memory for an 18 second file, and that's usually what you're going to run into when you do raw current settings, and you don't have any uh, codecs selected like, you know, high res 422 or H.264. Um, I would definitely recommend doing the raw settings, and this is why. Uh, I would highly recommend opening up iMovie and using iMovie to upload your footage and render it out. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to iMovie real quick. In iMovie, I would recommend making an event called whatever you want your event to be called. And uh, you're going to go to File, Import, and then Movies. And once you're inside of this, you're going to go to the uh, desktop, or wherever your file is located, and double click on it and it'll go ahead and import it. And what you're going to do in here is you're going to basically be able to uh, render out the file in a high quality format, 1080p or higher, or wait, my bad, 720p or higher. Um, and you can get a nice, you know, overall uh, quality video with a small file uh, footprint. It won't be a large amount of uh, storage taken up. So you basically drag this in here 
And if you want, you can go ahead and edit this even more uh, inside of iMovie. Uh, it's very simple to do like some sort of color correction if you want. Um, for example, color correction I would do on iMovie would be uh, turn up the saturation a bit, turn down the, uh, the green spectrum of color. That usually gives a nice effect. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and hit share once again, just like on Final Cut. And you have two options. You can either export movie and you can just select 1080p, simple as that, and export it to the desktop. Or you can do YouTube. Uh, this is the option I us usually do um, because, to be honest, it just works better for me um, going ahead and, and uploading videos to YouTube. And uh, the only thing to note about the uh, YouTube uploader is that it does not allow you to um, monetize the video if you're a partner. It does not allow you to add thumbnails or change your thumbnail. And you can't add annotations or anything while you're inside of this program. So it's very limited. Uh, all, you, all you also can't uh, put it as unlisted, which is kind of annoying. But you can uh, simply upload it through there and then go over to YouTube and change the settings from there. So basically that is how I render out my montages and edits I do um, from Final Cut to iMovie to YouTube. Uh, it's a very simple process and I think I think this will help a few people. I mean Final Cut's rendering isn't that difficult. I mean if you go into After Effects the render settings are much more complicated. Uh, but usually what you want to do is just up up all the settings and to the point where they're the highest possible and uh, then bring them into a program like this and just go with the more standard simplified uh, version of exporting like this where you can just go 1080p and it usually gives you a smaller clip, a uh, sm smaller sized clip uh, with better um, better overall space reduction and it fits better on YouTube and it works better with YouTube. That's pretty much it. That's my uh, quick video, my montage editing tutorial on render settings for Final Cut Pro. Hopefully this helped. Uh, if it did help, go ahead and like and comment on this video. And if you want to see more like this in the future, subscribe. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, those are always welcome in the comment sections or the private messages as well. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys next time on the next montage editing tutorials.